from the Cyber Hub Bunker and Studio. You're tuned to Cyber Hub. And now for your host and CISO, James Azar. Hey guys, good morning, happy Monday. I hope you had a great Christmas. Another week is upon us, the last week of 2020, guys. It's the last Monday of the year 2020. A lot of things to talk about today. Well, not a lot of things to talk about today, but you know, we, we have some stuff we need to, to mention, obviously, before we get started on today's show. But before we do that, folks, if you're watching us for the very first time, welcome to the Practitioner Brief. I'm James Hazar. I'm the host, and I'm also a CISO practitioner in, in, in work. And so um, you can subscribe to our podcast right now if you're watching us on YouTube. Subscribe, turn on the notification bell. Um, if you're listening on your favorite podcast listening platform, please make sure to subscribe. Give us a five-star review. That will help us and, most importantly, share our content. Our practitioner brief is available on our website at cyberhubpodcast.com. So a few house cleaning things. One, next week, next Monday, January 4th, brand new year, 2021, folks. 2021 is right around the corner. I can feel it i can smell it i can taste it i'm excited about it i know many of you are as well we're hoping for a better 2021 than 2020 2020 has been quite the year on thursday this week i'll be doing a kind of a countdown of some of the biggest stories um, in cyber this year and um talking a little bit about um what i'll be doing on january 4th because effective january 4th this practitioner brief will be live every single day at 9 a.m eastern standard time on youtube linkedin and periscope uh, Twitter. So you can watch me live. You can interact with me live. I'll be showing you the stories rather than reading on a piece of paper. You'll be seeing the sources from where I'm getting the story and what does it mean overall. So you'll want to tune in for that. That'll be 9 a.m. Effective January 4th, Eastern Standard Time every single day, folks. 40% of our audience is international. And so we're, we want to uh, be mindful of everyone so that way the people who wake up on the west coast can get it um, um, once it's uh, it's we're all set and done but you can get that as well so let's get right into today's uh, practitioner brief a few things here uh, that we want to talk about one solar wind does release an advisory um, an updated advisory for the supernova malware that we spoke about last week vietnam is targeted in an extremely complex supply chain attack and Citrix confirms an ongoing DDoS attack infect, uh, inf- impacting sorry, Netscaler ADCs. So SolarWind released an updated advisory for the additional supernova malware discovered to have been distributed through the company's network's management platform. Earlier last week, we spoke about supernova in a lot of detail. And now it included, um, and we know that it included also the Sunburst uh, backdoor malware as well. Um, After analyzing the breach, both Palo Alto Unit 42 and Microsoft both reported an additional malware named Supernova. Both Microsoft and Palo Alto believe that the additional malware is not associated with the group that deployed the Sunburst Trojan as part of the SolarWinds initial supply chain. And this is where folks' attribution plays in a a, a real impact. So there was a vulnerability within SolarWinds. They got in. It was publicly known by nation states. And everyone kind of went their own direction. And that's why attribution here is going to be extremely difficult. It's going to require more time. So we're going to need to be a little bit more patient. On Thursday of last week on Christmas Eve, SolarWinds released an updated advisory to include information about the Supernova malware and how their SolarWinds Orion network management platform distributed it specifically. Um, SolarWind advises all Orion platform customers to upgrade to the latest version to be protected from not only Sunburst vulnerability, but also the Supernova as well. Uh, For customers who've already upgraded to the 2020.2.1 HF2 or 2019.4 HF6 versions, um, those have been addressed, but everyone else does need to do that as well. Vietnam has been targeted in a complex supply chain attack, so a mysterious group's of uh, cyber criminals have carried out a clever attack against uh, the Vietnamese uh, private company and government agencies by essentially inserting malware inside a government software toolkit. 
The attack, which was discovered by ESET, detailed in a report named Operation Sign Sight, targeted the Vietnamese government certification authority, the government organization that issues digital certificate that can be used electronically to sign official documents. Any Vietnamese citizens, private company, and even other government agencies that want to submit files to the Vietnamese government was signed their documents with a VGSA compatible digital certificate. Uh, the VGCA doesn't only issue these digital certificates, but also provides ready-made and user-friendly client apps that citizens, private companies, and government workers can install on their computers to automate the signing of processes. Um, the um, ESET said that between July 23rd and August 5th, the two files contained a backdoor trojan named Phantom Net, also known as S Manager. S Manager, I'm sorry. The malware wasn't very complex, but merely a wireframe for more potent plugins, according to researchers. Uh, known plugins uh, included the functionality to, to retrieve proxy settings in order to bypass corporate firewalls and the ability to download and run other malicious apps. So extremely sophisticated folks. Um, testing it on Vietnam, very, very interesting. From a geopolitical standpoint, I don't know if you guys on Friday, if you didn't watch the LinkedIn Live I did with Charity Wright, we got really uh, into geopolitics and cyber attribution. I encourage anyone, if you're on YouTube, watch it now. It's our LinkedIn Live special under our special podcast playlist. If you're listening, you'll have to go to YouTube to catch it or on our LinkedIn page. The video is available there and uh, Cyber Hub Podcast, and you can watch it. We get into this. Something very interesting, by the way, as this was being discovered, India and Vietnam both sailed military warships in the South China Sea uh, in, in, in a clear message to Beijing. So... Uh, don't be uh, fooled one second. Cyber warfare is the fifth dimension and it's being used and we're talking about it right now. Citrix is confirming an ongoing DDoS attack impacting Netscaler ADCs. So Citrix has confirmed that an ongoing DDoS attack pattern using DTLS as an amplification factor is affecting Citrix application delivery controller, networking appliances with EDT enabled. The datagram transport layer security is a communication protocol for securing delay sensitive apps and services that use datagram transport. The DTLS is based on the TLS protocol and is designed to prevent eavesdropping and tampering and to protect data privacy. Uh, reports of the attack started trickling last week on the 21st with customers reporting an ongoing DDoS Amplify attack over the UDP 443 against Citrix, Net, Citrix Netscaler gateway devices. According to the advisory, uh, as part of this attack, an attacker or bots can overwhelm the Citrix ADC DTLS network uh, through Thoroughput potentially leading to outbound bandwidth exhaustion. The effect of this attack appears to be more prominent on connections with extremely limited bandwidth. The scope of the attack is limited to just a small number of customers. We don't know what that means or how many at this time. At the moment, according to Citrix, it impacts all ADCs with enlightened uh, data transport UDP protocols enabled, folks. So keep that in mind. Um, customers who uh, can't disable the DTLS in their environments are advised to reach out to Citrix Technical Support for workaround. That's it for our practitioner brief today here, folks. We'll be back tomorrow, again, 11 a.m. Eastern Standard Time, but effective next week, January 4th, we'll be live on LinkedIn and YouTube and Periscope and maybe even Facebook. We don't know yet. So if you don't follow us there, follow us there. You'll be able to watch the live video. 10 minutes, you'll see all my sources. I'm not reading off a piece of paper anymore. Um, I'll be sharing my screen with you. We'll be going over this. And once we're all set and done um, and and you see everything in front of you, we'll, we'll, I'll be able to answer questions as I'm going through the stories, if, if you have any remediation questions and so forth. It's gonna be great. Um, some really cool stuff that we're gonna that I'm kind of adding content into 2021. Uh, a lot of it based on your feedback and stuff that you guys have shared with me. So that's it for us here today, folks. We'll be back with more. Till then, stay cyber safe. We love feedback, so make sure to connect with us on social media and subscribe to our podcast on your favorite podcast listening platform.